Greetings viewers and coins alike. Thank you for stopping by for this July 4th special. As with the 50 subscriber special, I was unable to include the entirety of this story. The author is still working on the story in its entirety, and when it is available, I will provide the link in the description below. So in the meantime, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Persona Reflections The Trial of Strength Written by Amihan Lumaban August 26th, 20XX Evening The alto saxophone sang with the piano and bass as it resounded throughout the save room tavern. It was an erratic symphony, yet if Amihan listened, she found its foundation in the beat and nodded along. Ground yourself amidst the storm, and you will survive. Between school and moving, it'd be a miracle if she could breathe. Instead, she had another chain holding her back. Hey, Ami, this is Lorelai. Wow, can you believe it's been a year? Let's catch up. Amihan adjusted her glasses over fatigued Topaz eyes as she reread the direct messages on Somneroy's app. She leaned back in her seat and drummed her fingers against the tavern's oak table. This had to be a joke. Lorelai. Lorelai Travartna wanted to talk to her backstabber of an ex-friend? Ha! If that were true, then this world was a simulation. A heavy glass knocked on the table, and she sat up with a start. What the hell? She had not ordered yet. Oh, a jasmine dragon? Her gaze darted up just in time to see an hourglass of a woman plopped down in the seat across from her with her own drink. It took a moment for Amihan to register the impish grin and smiling dark eyes, but when she did, she couldn't help but laugh. Mina, glad you could make it. Why wouldn't I? She leaned against the table and rested her chin on a delicate hand. What doppel sister would I be if I didn't celebrate our birthdays with you? Right. Right. Her eyes widened before she averted her gaze and twiddled her thumbs. She forgot. How the hell could she forget? Gods, this wouldn't end well for her. Breathe, Amihan. Breathe. She reached into her bag for her laptop. There was one gift she could give, and she hoped it wouldn't look like a cheap cop-out. Ami? Mina sat up and leaned into the conversation. You okay? Yeah, I'm just making sure your gift is going to come through. You picked up Somnoroy again and playing a rogue now, ne? Mina nodded with a raised brow. Okay, this wouldn't look as last minute as she assumed. Then I think my gift is going to get more use from you than me. I'm positive you'll love it. Oh? Dark eyes squinted at her, and Mina pursed her lips. So I take it we aren't here for just food and drinks, then? Well, maybe. Depends on where this conversation goes, I guess. Amihan switched from Somneroy's equipment page to the social menu and presented the Krasin 12 Maya messages. <sighs> Lorelai messaged me. What? But you blocked her! Mina leaned closer to read the messages, and her brows scrunched together with greater concern. Do you think they're real? Yeah, I mean, think about it. A spammer would use something more generic, and not everyone calls me Ami. Honestly, though, it's the timing that gets me. The end of the month may be their birthdays, but for Amihan, a bitter memory overshadowed this. Cockroach. <laughs> the mere thought of it twisted her stomach, and she rubbed away the dull ache in her side. You deserved it. She closed her eyes and listened for the temple of the jazz band. Find your center, hurtful, wicked snake. Ground yourself amidst the storm. Self-centered bitch. I hate you. Amihan! A tight embrace from Mina pulled her out of her thoughts, though her chest and throat felt tauter than a tightrope. A hand clenched over her friendship charm, and she doubled over to hide her face. She was stronger than this. It's been a year already. It was time to move on. August 27th, 20XX, 
noontime. The Boonshin Blade? What a present, Ami. Mina sat at the edge of her bed and looked over it with her true eyes AR. Ami's weapon was a delightful reminder of why she loved Somneroi's crafting. The weapons one decided at character creation grew and transformed with them. It felt so much more personal than purchasing any other at the market, more so now that Ami gifted hers. The Bunshin Blade saw Ami through thick and thin of her nine levels with its mirror image ability. It may have conjured just one clone, but that helped protect her in the worst of encounters. When she learned Ami protected her equipment from permadeath just before that fateful day, she felt relieved too. All that attention put into a weapon only for it to be forever lost because of a backstabber? The mere thought of it was a punch to the soul. But to receive it as a gift? It was an honor. Even in its base state, she felt all the love and care Ami put into the weapon. The footlong straight blade towed the fine line between dagger and short sword classification, though its light weight told her it was more of the former. <laughs> she still remembered the day Ami and Lorelei argued during its forging process. Lorelei wanted more bang, but Ami preferred versatility. It was one of the few arguments Ami won, though Lorelei made a frequent reminder of her disapproval, even after it was made and done. It was funny when she thought about it, though. Why would Ami give this to her? If she picked up Somneroi again, then this could still be wielded by her no matter what class she chose. Even a wizard could use a dagger, and everyone knew squishy mages needed all the advantages they could get. It would be wise to talk about this with Ami when she had a clear head. Mina sighed and swapped in the Bunshin Blade before she dismissed her loadout menu and brought up the screenshot of the Crunson 12 Maya messages to study again. She couldn't believe that a year passed since Lorelei burned their bridges. They've made so much progress since then, and she couldn't help but be proud of Ami especially. With that said, this was the first time she's seen Ami so shaken in a while. Although, in all fairness, who would think straight after their abuser contacted them out of nowhere? But could it have been Lorelei who sent them? That was hard to believe since the block list was more than effective for most, if not all, users. Was it a bug? If so, it ought to be easy to squash, and its persistence would be mentioned in support forums. The messages were just personal enough for it to sting, but that begs the question, why would Lorelei reach out now? Something didn't feel right here, but she couldn't pinpoint what. Okay, just think it through. Based on her personal experience and what she heard, Lorelei threw away her toys when she was bored of them. Sure, Ami mentioned before someone could be welcomed back, but that was if there was still some usefulness in them. It would make more sense if Lorelei reached out to her instead of Ami. After all, Ami had... oh no. Ami had nothing to lose. Mina lunged for her cell phone on the bedside table, tapped out a number, and paced about her bedroom as the phone rang and rang. Come on, Ami. Come on, and pick up already! Without a doubt, this little minx got a head start on her scheme, but that didn't mean she couldn't catch up. She switched the phone to call her true eye and summon the group chat. Guys, I have a situation. What's going on? Amian's being too stubborn for her own good, and I think she's walking into a trap. On... Somneroi? Maybe even the other Somneroi. No time to explain. I think she's headed to Whaleschmidt Park. I'm close by. I'll be there in five. Her fingers froze when the other end of the call had a moment of silence, and she released a held breath when she heard a familiar voice. Hey, Mina. How's the- Amihan Malaya Lumabon. Ah, shit. August 27th, 20XX, Afternoon. What were you thinking, Ami? The last time you met Lorelai in secret, you were murdered! Ami Hun sighed as she snapped her true eye onto the right side of her glasses and eased back onto the bench in Velschmidt Park. A trembling hand placed itself over her heart, and she felt it pound fast against her chest. Was this from the anticipation of meeting Lorelai, or the fact that Mina was furious at her? Both. Probably both. But now wasn't the time to drown in anxiety. She needed to calm Mina down, and then, 
Well, she'd see from there. First off, that was in Sonroy, and I had it coming. But that still didn't take away the pain and intent behind the act now, did it? Second, I'm not gonna weep over the loss of a level one character. Game or not, she murdered you! What does she have to do to get you to hate her? Tear off your limbs and set them on fire? Damn, this was a fury of Mina's she'd never seen before. Perhaps she underestimated just how bad it could be. Min! Min! I get it! I do! Despite your warnings, I went out of my way to see her. It was stupid and dangerous, and I'm sorry. Silence. Silence which lasted for more than a moment. Silence which chipped away at Amihan's resolve by the second as she clutched her charm. Was this the final straw? Did this little stunt push Mina away too? She shouldn't be surprised, though. It was only a matter of time before she heard her again. She swallowed and held back her tears. This was for the best. At least now, no one else would be caught up in her nonsense. Bravo, Ami. I think that's the sincerest apology you've made since we met. Damn it. Amihan stiffened up and looked over her shoulder. There she was. Hello, Lorelei. A cheeky smile split across the brunette's face as she sauntered over. That prompted Amihan to stand and keep the bench between them while she surveyed her surroundings. The amphitheater behind her provided the quickest escape. Splash pads near the parking lot could be a roadblock, but it would test how waterproof the true eye was. I wish you'd call me Lore again. Her smile faltered, and she fidgeted with her loose button shirt. I kinda miss it. Uh-huh. Amihad stood firm and pocketed one hand. A flip from condescending to vulnerable just like that? How had she not noticed this before? Had it always been like this? Or was she that much of a bleeding heart to fall for it? So why'd you call me all the way out here? Why are you acting so defensive, Ami? I come in peace. Lorelai approached the bench and rested her forearms against its back. I just wanted to talk. But last time, no. Wiser to check how much Lorelai changed, if at all. About what? About what happened last year. Lorelai met eyes with Ami. It was stupid, childish, and if I could go back, I'd change what happened. Amihan's eyebrows shot up with surprise, and she broke away from that unwavering gaze. Could it be? Lorelai taking responsibility for her actions? It felt too good to be true, but no harm in humoring her, right? I get what you mean. I think about it almost every day. What would you have done different, then? Be more transparent? She glanced up from the corner of her eyes. All three of us were friends. And it was scummy of me to go behind her back. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Lorelai stared into the distance and mused over her thoughts. Now that I think about it, I shouldn't have let Mina go with you. And there it was. Let her? Are you kidding me? Mina was my girlfriend. That didn't mean you could make decisions for her. She's not your property. It also didn't mean you could take her away from me either. Lorelai grasped her wrist and shook her head in disbelief. Look, I know you were jealous of Mina. Jealous of her? For you? Huh. Amihan circled away from Lorelai and narrowed her eyes. What sort of mental gymnastics does it take to- Wow. And here I hoped you spent this past year getting your head out of your ass. And I thought you realized it was wrong for you to break us up. So I guess it evens out. Lorelai shook her head and extended her hand in good faith. Let's make this right. Just say you're sorry, and we can all be friends again, okay? Amihan's condensed breath escaped with a sigh. This wasn't going anywhere like she planned or even expected. And now, given Lorelai's demeanor, she wasn't sure if she could do or say anything which would appease her. Damn it, here she was again, basing decisions on her ex-friend's potential reactions. Okay, screw it. You know what? I won't deny that I got the ball rolling. Stay relaxed. Improve reaction time and pray to the change bringer that Lorelai was above a virtual beatdown this time. But your reactions were the final decision for us, whether you knew it or not. How you treated me sent a message, and I'm only sorry it took me four years to get it. She saw the rage build and build. Gold eyes widened, 
and that kind hand became a claw before it balled up into a fist. She almost saw the turbulent aura of rage consume her former friend, and a familiar pit shaped in the pit of her stomach. You've hurt me so many times, Amahan. The hand tightened and tightened until crimson dripped from the palm. How do you expect to help anyone as a nurse when you won't even listen to your best friend? You have entered the Vehemens Ward. Wait, what? That didn't sound like anything from Somneroy. An arctic wind rushed through the area and raised goosebumps on her skin, which confused her. It never got this cold during the winter, let alone summer. What the hell was going on? Her foot slipped out from under her, though she caught herself in the nick of time, and looked down to see the ground coated in ice. Not good, not good, not good! A quick look around of her surroundings, and she saw a translucent white wall form along the edges of the park's central field. The perimeter of the AR area. Lorelai, wait! We need to get out- Chains of crimson ice burst from the ground and shackled onto her wrists. That exact moment, lethargy struck her out of nowhere, and she groaned. Eyes. Heavy. Arms. Heavy. So. Tired. From the corners of her eye, a thin sheet of frost developed around her, like a bubble. Her body shivered as the temperature dropped, and she struggled to look up. No, 